Welcome to Mac Related Things. I'm your host, Jim Fair, MacRelatedThings at gmail.com. So it's a new email that I've set up. Uh, I'm still photo enthusiastic on this channel for now, but maybe one day I'll split off all this Mac stuff into its own channel. So today was Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference uh, 2020 keynote. Uh, which was broadcast from an empty Steve Jobs theater at Apple Park in Cupertino, California. So uh, it was quite fascinating to see the, the place just empty of people. So the coronavirus is changing things everywhere. Anyway, some big news from Apple. Uh, there's a new OS, it's called Big Sur. And the new OS is going to run Apple Silicon for the first time. So uh, Apple is going to transition over the next two years away from Intel processors in their Mac hardware to their own processors. So right now it's the uh, A9Z that is in the iPad Pro. And they introduced uh, a new uh, manager Alan Dye, D-Y-E, VP of Human Interface. He led the team to do the redesign of Mac OS. So they've made Mac OS more polished and more functional. And, you know, I think it continues its, um, its trend towards uh, looking like iOS. So iOS, Mac OS, Watch OS, iPad OS, they're all slowly coming together to look very, very similar so that everything uh, runs similarly on all of Apple's hardware. And once they transition to their own processors, this, this will be completed, I think. So what's in it for the user? A tremendous speed bump. So apparently these chips are much faster than Intel. They use less power, generate less heat, Plus, uh, it'll take advantage of all of those modules inside uh, that processor. So there's a cryptography acceleration, there's a neural engine, uh, which can do machine learning type of things. There's machine learning accelerators, uh, high performance GPU. So the GPU part of it is going to mean even the lowest end Mac with one of these processors in it is going to suddenly have amazing GPU performance. This, this will affect everything from gaming to, uh, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator. So this is going to be a big, big speed bump, and I think this will be a big value add for Apple hardware. So to manage this transition, which is going to take two years, Apple has resurrected Rosetta which was a technology to translate PowerPC instruction set to Intel back when Apple transitioned from PowerPC to Intel back in 2005. And in a similar way, Rosetta 2 translates Intel instruction set to the new native Apple SOCs, they're calling them. They don't call them CPUs or GPUs because there's so many things built into them now. They're called SOCs. So it's going to be very, very fast. So uh, the other technology they've introduced, uh, we used to have this thing called a universal binary. So you could have the PowerPC code and the Intel code together in one file called a universal binary. They're doing the same thing now, it's called universal two. So you'll have Intel code and Apple native uh, silicon code in a universal two binary. And the thing about Rosetta 2, instead of translating it while it's executing, it translates it into native code as you install it. So then the installed app is already native. So this should speed things up significantly. The uh, also mentioned virtualization is uh, a big thing for Mac OS. And they demoed uh, Debian Linux running a couple of things in the background. And all of your apps on your iPhone, your watch, uh, your iPad will now run on the Mac natively. So that's pretty amazing. So 
once this transition is complete. So the first Mac shipping with the new uh, silicon will be by the end of the year. Um, not sure which Mac it's going to be. I have my money on the Mac Mini. So a uh, pretty amazing speed bump. They showed, uh, I think it was called Shadow of Tomb Raider which is a, uh, you know, an Intel native game running Apple's Metal API. And it just ran at full speed in 1080 and it looked beautiful. Um, what else did they show? They showed a copy of Maya uh, running natively and it looked like um, Iron Man. It looked like Iron Man on a set. <laughs> And it said there's something like 6,000 polygons and they could turn on the shaders in Maya and rotate it in real time and there was no lag. It was just speedy. So if you've ever used an iPad Pro, you know this processor is very, very fast, very, very small, uses very low power and generates not a lot of heat. So this will be a big game changer for Apple, I think. And it will certainly make them more competitive uh, assuming they can keep their prices down, which is a big question mark, right? There was a demo of uh, Lightroom, I mentioned Photoshop uh, natively. Oh, and uh, Final Cut Pro uh, running f live uh, 4K, three streams at once, and you can drag and drop effects onto the playback, and it applies it instantly in real time. So that's pretty amazing. I'd love to see that on a Mac. So, so amazing stuff coming from Apple. And uh, sometime by the end of this year, and over the next two years, they'll transition to their own uh, SOCs or Apple Silicon. They call it Apple Silicon. I call it Silicon. Uh, maybe it's a Canadian thing, I don't know, or a British thing. I think of silicon, not silicon. But, you know, the first time uh, Tim said Apple Silicon, I didn't know what he was talking about until they put the graphic behind him that says Apple Silicon. <laughs> so, uh, I've always found the California accent quite uh, charming. Uh, Steve Jobs, uh, in particular, some of the way he said things like what he said, the way he says automatically stuff quite fascinating. Anyhow, that's the Apple news of the day. Uh, thanks for watching. Fade out.